In the last video, I showed you the removal of these bearings. And while I was taking them off, I found something a little bit strange. I'll show you at the end of the video. Let me know your thoughts. Now, a car and the rolling road will take the trailer overweight. I'll show you in this video how I think we can get around this. First up, before I get distracted with how to get around the weight problem, I'm getting this thing ready for uh, blasting. I'm going to take the whole thing on the trailer, dismantle the trailer when I get there as best I can, have it blasted and then drag it back to paint. So here I am cutting off a load of bits I don't need, then I get distracted with this. The next thing to do is sort this gap out. I've got support between the frame and the, and the trailer in six locations at the moment, but I want two more at the front. It turns out when you wind this, you can actually close this gap. See here, that fits nicely, but I can very easily wind the front of the trailer up and close that gap completely, look. So that is, in fact, quite a floppy trailer, but the rolling road frame is actually offering the strength to the trailer. And you can see there's a huge gap. So I'm going to chop that in half, weld one here to the underside of the rolling road frame on both sides, drill and put a bolt through there, and the same on that side. That's the job now. So on these go with the MIG 180, the lovely MIG uh, Artec welder. I didn't actually do a very good job of this, but the, the welder did a good job, it's just the operator, operator error. But they're nice and strong anyway, as you can see. So this is, this is how I'm going to solve the weight problem. These are 90 by 90 box with like a 3 or 4 mil wall, they're very strong. So here you can see I've put an angle on it now, so that's going to fit up against the underside of this, this is the underside of the, the lip. So I've got some 100 by 100 here as well, which fits over the top. So I'm cutting some 90 by 90s. I need four of those for what I've got planned, which you will see. One, two, three, four. So this is how I'm going to support the rolling road. It's designed to be supported from that top edge. If you were to sink this in concrete, the weight of the thing will be on that top lip, hanging off the, the edge of the concrete, if you like. So I'm going to replicate that with these, uh, with these legs I'm going to make. So I'm just using a bit of scrap here to get it nice and straight and then tack those on to start sort of thinking about and digging up what I'm going to do. Now we have a template, I can make all the legs match that one perfectly. Well, the frame has somewhere for that little section of box to go. It does not at the back because the mud guard will be here and it will foul all the wheels in the way as well. Which is why I'm going to weld this piece, which fits over the top of that piece down there, onto here to create the same effect as at the front of the rolling road trailer, but back here for the rear legs. So now I can offer that leg up, jack it up against that shelf and tack weld this in place. So I've got the whole rolling road level and then I can get the leg vertical and that's just a nice easy way of making sure it's perpendicular. Get that tacked in place, check it still fits. And then I just went ahead and blasted that thing on there in a permanent fashion. <laughs> Now I am making some additional supports to help strengthen that piece I've put on there. You'll see uh, I've cut a little section out here and you can see how it fits. So I'm just trying to support it lefty righty now if you like. So that's going to translate the load off to the right hand side in this image. I've welded those in now. I'm very pleased with the result. I need to fill in this gap here down to here with a flat plate, which is what I'm about to cut. Luckily I have a lot of flat plate having cut quite a bit off the rolling road to save a little bit of weight where I can. So that blasts on there, nice and uh, thick, and I've put some chamfers on it so I can really get a lot of weld in there. Uh, that's going to form where the rolling road leg is bolted. I'm going to show you my mistakes. I cut the corner off the back of the rolling road and the front of the rolling road here, which I thought neatened it up beautifully. But of course, I'm now putting a leg here, uh, most of well, all of which the weight of the rolling road would be taken by this flange. So I don't like it. It's going back on. <laughs> Just to include you in all my mistakes, that was a pain in the ass, and now I'm going to put the blooming thing back on. <laughs> I've been amazed by the response to these videos. I thought I was going to lose everybody when I switched from Land Rover to Rolling Road. So thank you all for staying tuned or even for tuning in. If you can think of anything I'm missing or any concerns you've got about this Rolling Road thing, please let me know. I don't know that anybody's ever done this before, so I'm sure there's some pitfalls to fall into. Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. That'd be much appreciated. So once again, you can see I put a huge chamfer on it. So there's a nice little sort of valley for the well to fill up. Get a nice strong weld, get it on there nice and straight and then blast away. <laughs> I've done it on both sides as well, so you can see on the on the other side as well when I'm finished with that shot. Smoking away, here it is. So, that was a waste of time. <laughs> right, that's them back on. And ground flat. More importantly, on the bottom, where they're going to have the legs sat. So now we can support the weight of the rolling road here and here. 
Now these are 90 by 90 as well, but I'm going to chop them down a little bit, you'll see. Just chop a little section out like that and weld them back together, as you can see here, so that that fits inside the 90 by 90. So you can push the leg onto the bottom of the rolling road from below and that will slot inside the leg and that's going to uh, locate the leg lefty, righty and forwards and backwards at the top edge. So now I'm just going to get the rolling road level again so that I can use the spirit level to get the legs vertical. So I'm just using gravity rather than a straight edge basically. And now I know where to put those little pieces on that I've just made, you see. I've got a scrap of the 90 by 90 that tiny little red slither, uh, in order to position it correctly. And now you can see the leg just pushes on from below, you see. Now, to blast that on, obviously, I need to get that well attached because uh, that's going to be helping to support the weight of the rolling road and the car when it's on top. So there are four of those to do because I'm going to have four leg locations in order to get around this weight problem. So those all get uh, welded on. I think I yeah, welded all those on in a permanent fashion right from the get-go. But there's still quite a lot to do. Um, so I'm going to go with the first leg and attach the nugget on the side of it in a permanent fashion, but there's still three other legs to do. So I've finished now making a leg. I've got four legs to do, they're very quick. Cutting the bottom out of this section here and creating this thing at the top, which you can see sits away from the surface. So that's on the underside of the lip of the rolling road, look. And I'll show you the leg going on. So a single bolt now will go through there into this 15mm plate. So I'm just going to drill those out. I think it's 9mm it won't work. And I stuck with 9 which is actually too small for the M12 bolt obviously. But I used 9mm to, to accurately locate the hole in the rolling road. So now I put the leg on, jack it up, hold it in place. And now I can translate accurately that hole into the rolling road you see. So I need to just do a little bit just to mark the hole basically. So this first leg is, is the important one. This is the accurate one. I'm gonna work all my all my working is out. I've done off that one. So now I know where to drill. I can drill it out. So we start with the six, <laughs> and uh, I'll skip it later. We, we finish with the nine. And later on, I take all these out to twelve. So now that one is done, I can get the next leg, which is uh, only tacked together, and I can try. Uh, I can translate that hole back onto the leg. So I come behind that leg, drill through from behind the rolling road. So then I can do this with all three legs, and I've now got all three legs exactly the same, so that any leg can fit in any location on the rolling road, you see. Now I'm using the first leg, my jig leg, if you like, to translate the position of those holes onto all the other locations on the rolling road now. And you can see I'm taking those holes out again. So get all the way around the rolling road and get all those translated. Now you might have spotted two of these legs are red and two of them are not. The red ones are going to be longer and the uh, non-painted ones are shorter. So the eagle-eyed will notice that obviously I wanted to get this rolling road sloping. So I can have the rolling road at the same angle as the ramps. So these two red legs which are longer will go on one side and then the shorter legs will go on the other side. Now I've still got to trim them down to be the perfect length. At the moment they're just too long which is fine. I can work with it for now and sort that out. Uh, sort that out when the time comes. So for now I'm attaching these uh, legs and you can see with the welder welding downwards, what a beautiful job it does. Right, happy with that. So you can begin to see what this is going to look like now. These are the two longer legs, the red legs. And I'm still translating holes from the rolling road to the legs in order to drill those accurately. A lot of drilling on this and there's a whole lot more to come in another video actually. It gets a little bit tiring. <laughs> I guess it's better than grinding. So I translated the hole into that one as well. Uh, and this is a uh, very serious thick steer. It takes a lot of getting through. Here we go, more holes, six mil, nine mil, and the last leg, six mil, nine mil, and I can go through to the other side so it's nice and accurate on the pillar drill. Yeah, so I've got two accurate holes in each leg. That's it, I'm done with that thing. Now we get uh, the pan drill out just to take those nines out to 12 mil, and then those are all uh, the right size to take the bolt, which you can see in just a moment. I don't know why I didn't actually use the pillar drill for the 12 mil. Anyway, that's the bolt, a nice fit, look, and I drop it in. And actually, when this is complete, I'm going to use a little jubilee clip to hold that bolt inside so it's permanently with the leg to, uh, to speed up the assembly process. Jack it up, put the legs on, take the wheels off, lower it down. I'm going to have to do this at every show or, uh, or mapping event or anything like that. 
and removing all the bearings and I find shims which is very strange so here are the bearings these two here as an example they support one roller that one there it's not connected to anything else mechanically it's on its own shaft supported by the bearings and rotationally it's connected by a belt so this can be on any angle it doesn't have any effect on the other roller bearings so there's just two bearings they sit in spheres in the pillow block so there is a tiny bit of movement that way uh, allowing for misalignment so why is there a shim under that bearing i've measured it it's brass is 0.1 millimeter thick that is nothing it's very thin so it's raising this roller up at one end by 0.1 millimeter. I just want to stress, it's the thickness that I find is weird. It's not unusual for them to uh, want to align the rollers, like you'd align the wheels on your car. But this is four thou. There is nothing to it. Can it really, my concern is, can that really be that important? Four thou over two foot, three foot spacing between, between bearings? It just seems weird that they've used such a fine shim. Stay tuned, we'll get some paint on this thing next.